Hello everybody, this is Debbie again, and I'm going to finish out the series on how to make a jigsaw mystery reveal activity. And so for the first video was how to make the your picture into jigsaw puzzle pieces. The second video showed how to put those pieces into the Google Sheet. And now this time we don't need any of the templates uh, because we uh, already have our setup. We're going to start from where we left off, which is with our Google Sheets with all of our puzzle pieces, pictures already imported onto sheet two, and now we just have to put in our questions. So just flipping the sheet two here, remember we put all of these puzzle pieces in there last time. Or perhaps you found some ones and you just wanna edit their questions and answers. So you don't have to do anything with this part. All of these pictures are already set in there. I wanna explain a little bit about how this formula in here works, because inside this box where the puzzle pictures appear is where this big long formula is. Okay, and this formula basically says, if number one is correct, then show this picture. But if number two and number one are correct, then show a different picture. And it goes all the way through up to number 12. So if one through 12 are correct, this is the picture that it is the computer is told to show us. If we take this one off, well now only one through 11 are correct. And so it shows us up to picture 11. If we were to have one missing in the middle, Formula has to work in order. It has to read it in the way that it's written. Number one, two, three, and four are all correct, but number five is not. So the formula cuts off and it gives us the picture for number four. You see there's one, two, three, four puzzle pieces here. Um, you can Students can do them out of order, but they won't get the pictures until they are filled in in order from one through 12. So if they were to go back and you know, say they got this one wrong to begin with, the box would turn red, letting them know it's wrong. So they could come back later. And if they put the right answer in, it's gonna jump straight to the end because now answers one through 11 are correct. And so that's the picture that it gives us. So that's just a little explanation of how the formula works. Now we have to put our answers in here. And when we do that, the picture is obviously gonna disappear because the picture is still programmed to only appear with the correct answer of one. So I'm going to just start putting my answers in here. Um, and it's going to show me that it's wrong. That's OK. We haven't changed the, the sheet two yet to tell it what the correct answers are supposed to be. Um, I think that's a little bit too big. So I'm just going to highlight this row and change my font size down to 18. I want it to be a little smaller so it's more readable to the kids. Um, I go along here and put all of the answers in. will only work um, if you spell the answers correctly. So that is an important piece um, that you'll have to remember. If you're not going to give them a word bank, they would need to uh, know how to spell all of the words. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of a shortcut here and I'm gonna jump over to one that's already finished where I have already put all of the words in. I'm just gonna copy them real quick. Okay. All right. So it's showing me that all of these words, these are the answers to my vocabulary questions, but they're all written in red. So I need to go now to sheet two, where all of the answers are stored and where this formula is directed to. It's not directed to these boxes. It's directed to sheet two. So I'm going to copy all of my answers here. I just clicked on the first one and dragged it down. And then I hit control C in order to copy. I'm going to go over to sheet two. And I have to scroll over just a little bit to where we can see problem number and answers. So this is where my answers have to go. I'm going to paste it over here next to it because I need to type it in there. Um, so I'm going to control V, paste what I had from the other page, and I'm putting it here. So now it's just an easier way than flipping back and forth from sheet one to sheet two. Now I can simply go down the line and type in my answers. The reason, one of the reasons you can't paste directly into this answer column is that on page, on sheet one, these are actually three rows merged together. And so it would skip every other line. So that's the reason you have to kind of get to the side and type in your answers by hand. It's not too big of a deal. If they were long words or formulas, you could always copy and paste them one at a time. Okay. 
hopefully I spelled everything right, no typos. Now you wanna delete this. Um, I just select the entire column by clicking on the S up here and I hit the delete E to get rid of it. And I also go to format and clear formatting. And that just takes away all of the joined lines and colors and whatnot, just so it, if somebody were to find sheet two, they won't be confused by what that is. Now, I've put all the correct answers in here. So when I go back to sheet one, I should see all of these are green and the puzzle is completely there. Okay, I'm gonna show you what would happen if I've only done five of these so far. On sheet one, just those first five have the green because they are correct. They match what's on sheet two and we have five, picture five is revealed. So once you have in number six here, Now you see that number six is in green and there is another puzzle piece revealed. So you have to put all the answers in here on sheet two and you wanna hide the sheet because you don't want the kids to see the answers. A couple different things that I do to hide my sheets. Um, you can just hide the sheet itself, but I also hide what's on the sheet in case they find the hidden sheet. And I do that by clicking on the top left box of the spreadsheet. So this is above number one and it's all the way to the left. When you click on that, it selects your entire sheet, all the cells of the entire sheet. And I go up to the font color and I change it to white. So all my answers are still there, but you can't see them. You can also choose column L by clicking on the L at the top, right clicking and hiding that column. So then your pictures are gone as well. So that's two things change the font to white, hide column L, and then you wanna go down to sheet two tab at the bottom, there's a little down arrow, or you can right click, the same menu will come up, and you wanna click on hide sheet. Okay, so that sheet is hidden. They can still find it and so can you. When you go up to view, hidden sheets, it tells you that there's one and this is the sheet right here. So if you click on that, sheet two reappears. So that's why I do the font color change and hiding that column, because if they find sheet two, they're going to see that uh, they, can't, they can't find anything. So just a little trick um, to help the kids from the curious kids that want to find the answers uh, the easiest way possible. So there we go. Our activity is totally finished. And you want to, uh, before giving it to the kids, of course, erase all of the answers. And it's programmed that they're not gonna show up red if this is empty and actually just shows a white box. So it's, it's programmed that if it's empty, it's white. If it's correct, it's green. If it's wrong, it's red. So that is it. Uh, you are ready to share with your students in, an, in a Google assignment or however you normally share activities. And of course, if you make one of these, it'd be great if you could share it in the Facebook group. So if you have any questions, that is the best place to go. There's a lot of great people there with, with knowledge that they're happy to share. And also check out more of the videos on our YouTube channel. Thanks and have a great night.